Welcome to Hornbill TV's Prime at 9. I'm Lishni Chaste. Now for the news in details. As per sources, Naglen Chief Minister Nifiru, along with UDA Chairman T.R. Ziliang and a few other members of the core committee on Naga political issues have left for Delhi today to hold what has been touted as a future course of action for arriving at an acceptable solution. The visit comes after the core committee held a fresh round of talks in Kohima, ahead of the Delhi too. Although all eyes were set on a crucial meeting of the parliamentary committee on the Naga political issue, nothing much is known about the outcome of the meet that was held on Saturday. Speculation still persists over the outcome of the deliberations at different levels to bring a much-awaited solution to the Vax Naga issue. The UDA chairman, T.R. Zeliang, recently revealed that they had sought a feedback from the center as to what would be the last or final offer as far as the vexed issue of the separate flag and constitution is concerned. However, as per Zeliang, there has been no response so far. Shebaz Sharif, the brother of former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and the leader of opposition PMLN, has been elected unopposed as the next Prime Minister of Pakistan, succeeding Imran Khan, who was removed by a no-trust vote on Saturday. Ahead of the elections of the new Prime Minister, Imran Khan resigned as a member of the National Assembly, saying he will not sit in the assemblies with thieves. His party, the Pakistan Tariq A. Insaf, boycotted the voting and lawmakers stage a walkout. The PTI had filled the Shah Mehmood Kwarishi as its prime ministerial candidate. But minutes before the session, former information minister Fawad Chaudhry said all PTI lawmakers will resign from the National Assembly and not become part of any government which was being formed under a foreign agenda. The reference was to Khan's allegation that the US was involved in a conspiracy with the opposition to topple his government. The decision Chaudhry said was taken at a meeting of lawmakers of the party ahead of prime ministerial elections. Expressing discontent over the prime ministerial elections in Pakistan, former Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan on Monday resigned from the National Assembly. The development comes after Imran Khan said that he will not sit in the assemblies with thieves, the man who has 16 billion and 8 billion rupees of corruption cases, whoever selects and elects the Prime Minister cannot be a big insult to the country. We are resigning from the National Assembly, Imran Khan was quoted as saying by PTI's official Twitter account. Many leaders from the Pakistan Tariq A. Insaf party tendered their resignations to the Pakistan National Assembly today. PTI member of National Assembly Murad Syed was the first member of the party who submitted his resignation to the Speaker of the National Assembly as per ARY News. उस आदमी को जो भी सिलेक्ट करता है इलेक्ट करता है प्राइम मिनिस्टर इससे बड़ी मुल्क की तोहिन नहीं हो सकती सर इस्तीफा दे रहे हैं सर इस्तीफा दे रहे हैं सर दे रहे हैं ओके थैंक यू सर थैंक यू जी सर जो आदमी राइट सर एक मिनट रुक जाएंगे सर इस्तीफा दे अरब रुपए का एक करप्शन का केस 8 अरब रुपए का दूसरा केस उस आदमी को जो भी सिलेक्ट करता है इलेक्ट करता है प्राइम मिनिस्टर इससे बड़ी मुल्क की तोहिन नहीं हो सकती सर इस्तीफे दे रहे हैं सर इस्तीफे दे रहे हैं ओके विद रेफरेंस टू मीडिया रिपोर्ट्स रिगार्डिंग द हिंदी इंपोजिशन रो साइटिंग द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ द यूनियन होम मिनिस्टर अमित शाह दैट ऑल द एट नॉर्थ ईस्ट स्टेट्स हैव एग्रीड टू मेक हिंदी कंपलसरी अप टू क्लास 10 Principal Directorate of School Education, Shanawa C, through a press release, clarified that Naglan follows three language formula up to class 8 and Hindi is offered as a compulsory language subject up to class 8. In classes 9 and 10, he said students have the liberty to study either Hindi 
or any modern Indian language, Ao, Bengali, Lotha or alternative English as a Saiyan language. Shanava said the National Education Policy 2020 advocates adopting three language policy up to secondary but it does not impose any language on states. As per NEP 2020, the three languages learned by children will be the choices of states, regions and of course the students themselves. The timeline for the implementation of NEP 2020 is within 2030 and the Ministry of Education has not issued any instructions for making Hindi compulsory in the secondary stage, he stated. He also highlighted the policy number 4.13 of the National Education Policy 2020, where it stated that the three language formula will continue to be implemented while keeping in mind the concentrational provisions, aspirations of the people, regions and the union, and the need to promote multilingualism as well as promote national unity. However, there will be greater flexibility in the three language formula and no language will be imposed on any state. The policy also stated that three languages learned by the children will be the choices of states, regions and of course the students themselves, so long as at least two of the three languages are native to India. Students who wish to change one or more of the three languages, they are studying may do so in grade 6 or 7 as long as they can demonstrate basic proficiency in three languages by the end of secondary school. A bus carrying students of St. Joseph College, Jakama met with an accident at Pesama while returning to Kohima. As per the information given by the Southern Angami Students Union, the driver was in an inebriated state. He was taken to the custody of the South Police Station, Kohima. Few students were reportedly suffered minor injuries while one female student had a spinal injury. Sri Lankans continued staging protests near President Secretariat in the capital city, Colombo, amid an unprecedented and dire economic crisis in the country. They held banners and raised slogans against the ruling government and demanded President Gotabaya Rajapaksha's resignation for mishandling the financial crisis. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha on Monday assured his citizens that his government is working round the clock to address the woes and appeal to the protesters to end their agitation. Every second you protest in a road, we are losing dollars, said the Prime Minister. Amidst a growing pressure on him to quit following the unprecedented economic crisis facing the island nation, the leader addressed the nation in a bit to calm the agitating people who are protesting on the streets of a lengthy power outages and shortage of gas, food and other essential commodities. Rasia, Pasukar de Vedabava, Amakiandulu Mitrorni Corona was under the impasse. A pit of Mondina Tiduno, Arctic Prasna, Apparati Janata, Hundin Tiru, Aragon de Bava, Mama Viswasakarno. 
मी वसांगते जनता वगे जीवित बेरगन अपने पुलवांग उन्हाल बैंग अपेर अट विशाल गादे घटे दे बैठे मी क्यों नहीं आती अपने देने नो रटा वसात है मी मत एक विदेश विनिमय ना मार्ग है ला आयरुनु है टी विदेश सांचिता सिंधी की है टी Amid the worst economic crisis faced by Sri Lanka, the nation's leader of opposition, Sajid Premadasa, appealed to world leaders to help Sri Lanka to the maximum possible extent. Sri Lanka is in the midst of a severe economic crisis with food and fuel shortages impacting a substantial portion of the population. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, the economy has been in free collapse resulting in a tourism industry crash. We have a very simple message to all our partners, international institutions, financial institutions, our international partners of the global community, nation states, help Sri Lanka to the maximum possible extent. Don't stick to your usual framework. Go beyond the framework come outside the framework and help us uh, in this very difficult situation. We are in dire need of scarce dollars uh, that are needed to fund the bare essentials uh, needed for human beings to survive. Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Y.S. Jagan Mohan Vedi on Monday reconstituted the state cabinet inducting 13 new faces and re-inducting 11 from his first team. Veteran legislator Dharmana Prasada Rao has also been taken into the cabinet, making him the senior most minister. Governor Biswa Bhushan Harichandan administered the order of office and secrecy to 25 members of the cabinet at a public function near the state secretariat in the capital city, Amaravati. Adi Moolapu Suresh, to swear in the name of God, solemnly affirm that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the constitution of India. Baksa Satcha Nayana Nenu, Shashram Dora Nirmit Mena, बात राज्यांग पटला ऐसे में निश्चितसम विदेशीता चुपता नहीं भारत देश का सर्वोच्च अधिकार नहीं समग्र तरह कापारता नहीं बूढ़े मुच्छल नहीं डू अनेन नू सांसन में द्वारा निर्मित में ना भारत राज्यांग का पटला ऐसे में निश्चितसम विदेशीता चुपता नहीं भारत देश का सर्वोच्च अधिकार नहीं समग्र सासनम द्वारा निर्मित महीना भारत राज्यांगम पटला निज महीना विश्वासम विदेशीता चुकता नहीं चिल्लू बॉय ना श्रीनिवास वेणुगोपाल कृष्ण अने नैनु सासनम द्वारा निर्मित महीना भारत राज्यांगम पटला निज महीना विश्वासम विदेशीता चुकता नहीं Unexpected lines nobody from the legislative council was taken into the cabinet. The fresh council of ministers has been concentrated solely on caste and community lines. Two, including the chief minister, are from the minority communities, five from the shadow caste and one from the shadow tribe. For each from the Redi and the Kapu communities have also been inducted. The cabinet has four women members, one out from the previous Kamar, Shatriya and Vishya communities that had one representative, each in the previous cabinet were now completely left out. Brahmin community was denied a cabinet berth yet again. Of the total 26 districts in the state, at least seven did not find any representation in the new cabinet. The center on Monday designated Mohyuddin Arungazib Almagir alias Amar Alvi, the mastermind of February 14, 2019 Pulwama attack and brother of Jesh e Muhammad Chief Maulana Masood Azhar as an individual terrorist under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Amar Alvi, 39, a resident of Bahawalpur, Punjab, Pakistan, is a senior leader of JEM and was involved in the 2019 Pulwama suicide attack 
in which 40 personnel of the Central Reserve Police Force were killed, according to a notification issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs. A government official said on condition of anonymity that once a person is designated as a terrorist, under the federal anti-terror law, agencies such as the National Investigation Agency can seize the assets of such persons. The Home Ministry further stated that Alvi has also been involved in facilitating the infiltration of Afghan cadres and coordinating terror attacks on Indian security forces in Jammu and Kashmir. Amar Alvi has already been charged, sheeted along with his brothers, Maulana Masood Azhar and Abdul Rauf Azgar in the month of August 2020. The agency also named their nephew Umar Farooq, who was sent to Kashmir to execute the Pulwama attack and 15 others. A total of 9,674 precaution doses of COVID-19 vaccines were administered in the 18 to 59 years age group on the first day on Sunday, taking the cumulative doses given in the country to 185.74 crore, the Union Health Ministry said. India on Sunday began administering precaution dose of COVID-19 vaccines to all aged above 18 years at private vaccination centers. All those above the age of 18 who have completed nine months after the administration of the second dose are eligible for the precaution dose. So far, more than 2.22 crore children in the age group of 12 to 14 years have been administered with the first dose of COVID-19 vaccine, the ministry said on Monday. The center on Saturday told all states and UTs that the precaution dose will be of the same COVID vaccine which has been used for administration of first and second dose and that private vaccination centers can charge up to a maximum of Rs 150 per dose as service charge over and above the cost of the vaccine. States and UTs on Saturday were also informed that no fresh registrations would be required for precaution dose as all due beneficiaries are already registered on COVID. Manipur today observed the 172nd death anniversary of Maharaj Nara Sen at Kangla in Infal. Chief Minister Anbirin Sen led the ministers, MLAs and other officials in paying floral tribute to the portrait of Maharaja Nara Sen at his memorial. He also led other dignitaries in offering tarpan at Nungjing Pokri Achoba. The program was organized by Manipur State Archaeology, Department of Art and Culture. After the floral tribute, a contingent of 1st Battalion Manipur Rifles offered the Guard of Honor, gun salute and sounded the last post as a mark of respect to lead Maharaja Nara Singh.
Speaking on the occasion, the Chief Minister stated that the state government had started paying tribute and respect to forefathers, organizing functions at state level to make people aware of their sacrifices towards protecting their motherland. He said whatever the state have today is all because of the hard work and sacrifices of the leaders. Birin informed that the government had started seeing sites at Nong Mai Ching Hills to install the statue of Mai Cho Tarot. He also said that Maharaja Narasin would also be installed at the western gate of Kangla within 100 days. Member of Parliament Raja Sabha, Leshimba Sanajoba, also delivered the speech. To mark a protest against the center's petty procurement policy, Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandra Shekhar Rao and elected representatives from the state, including MPs, MLAs and MLCs, staged a dharna in Delhi. Bharatiya Kisan Union leader Rakesh Chiket also joined the protest. Center's policy is discriminatory towards Telangana farmers. We demand a uniform procurement policy for petty protesters, told ANI. The Telangana government has been pressing the center for the procurement of the entire paddy produced in the state. लोग यही बोल रहे जो पैडी प्रक्यूरमेंट का जो पॉलिसी है पूरा दुनिया कर भर में एक ही पॉलिसी रहना वन नेशन वन पॉलिसी रहना अब पंजाब के लिए एक पॉलिसी बनाए तेलंगाना के लिए एक पॉलिसी बनाए More COVID-19 variants are likely to come, but there is nothing to panic about, said National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization Chief N.K. Arora. He added that the latest variant XE is only one among the X series of COVID-19 variants. Arora said whatever has been described as the XE variant is only from the first layer of testing. To ascertain which variant is it with one test is very difficult. He added. That basic nature of Omicron, like other variants of COVID-19, they change their shape very rapidly. And particularly in Omicron, it has been seen that when uh, there are something called breakpoints. So when variant one and BA1 and BA2, these are two variants of Omicron. When they are together in an individual and infecting together, they can mix and meet each other and generate new variants. So it is like mating. So different substrains of Omicron can mix and become new variants. And because there are too many points at which this mixing can happen. That's all we have for now. Stay tuned for more news with Hornibill TV.